Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is a handover of a 2018 Chasson Welcome 640. We're starting the walk round on the driver's side of the vehicle first. First point you get to is your LPG locker. And on this vehicle it's got gas low. So using your habitation key, which is the small round headed key, you can open the locker. But on the door is the filler. So it's a refillable system, so you go to your local LPG centre, get the nozzle, turn the bayonet fitting so it connects to the two pins and pull the trigger back and then press the button on the display of the pump until simply the bottle won't take any more. And in here you have your bottle, so it's an 11 kilogram bottle and you can turn on and off via here. Obviously you can see the level, so it's about half the tank of gas in that bottle at present and then beside it you do have your barbecue point gas supply so you can turn that on and off and that will work the gas point which is just behind us so there's a quick release fitting here so just uncable tie that get some gas hosing and some jubilee clips pop it in the bottom and then turn on the red tap which will give you a gas supply for your Kadak or external awning heater. You've got your Fiamma F45 awning, roll out canopy, your awning light and your two fridge vents. Located behind the passenger, or should I say the driver's back wheel, is your wastewater outlet. So you just pull that open, over the grid on the way out of your site and that'll, that's just any water that you've used or put down a club hole. Remember, remembering in the winter, to keep that open so that no water is sat in there and could potentially freeze. Here you have your toilet. So again, open to the habitation key. Making sure that the blade's in the closed position, which I'll show you once inside. You'll be able to lift the orange fed fit handle and slide the cassette free of the vehicle and the empty you do have wheels so if it's heavy you can drag it to your waist disposal point which is normally beside your toilet block remove the grey cap press the orange button on the back and tip out once you've tipped it out put some water in give it a rinse tip out again and then fill the cap with 120 millilitres of chemical either the blue or the green straight in here and it's good to go back into the van and be used. On the back of the vehicle you do have your garage, so it's heated by the diesel heater. It has 12 volt and a 230 volt plug in here, along with the light. Once the control panel's on, your light will work. This is your winding handle, which is magnetic for your bike rack. First of all, you loosen off the straps on the side. Unclip the straps on both sides. And then you can use the winding handle onto here. Wind the rack down to load your bikes, which will take two bikes. And then you'd simply Take the two faster caps off. Pull the reel down. 
you can move these chocks to chuck your bike wheels to any length and then pop the straps through the spokes to tie it down and then these are just for your crossbars so last bike and first bike and then we do recommend that you put some sort of bike lock around your bikes when they're on the back of the van so that if you do leave the motorhome unattended your bikes are safe and then you would just wind it back up with the bike rack down so the bike sits higher than the back access garage door you've got your high level brake light and your rear view camera on the back thinner longer garage door that we've seen in the garage And then underneath the van is where you drain off the fresh water. So underneath here, there is a bung on the end of a pipe. And it's white on yours. So you can turn it. And as you can see there, it lets the water out. But you want to make sure that it's fully drained down in the winter so that no water has left in the vehicle and could potentially freeze because it does void your warranty. To fill the vehicle with water, carry your hose pipe with some hose pipe fittings, pop the hose pipe into here and fill it with fresh water. Should you have filled it and you've got a full tank and you're now ready to drive off and you're driving a fair distance to your next site but you want to have enough water to stop and use the toilet or have a cup of tea, there's a little travel drain here so that'll keep 20 litres left in the tank. So what you've got to do is lift that up Put the pump on inside the vehicle and open the tap and it will drain the tank down to 20 litres remaining so that you're lighter on weight and you're better on fuel and you can put more kit on board as you're not going to be running round overweight. Here you have your trips on mains electric. Two fuses for the diesel heater so if the diesel heater starts to flash green turn it off, remove the two fuses and then pop the two fuses back in and that should reset the fault and then you've got your main fuses for your appliances your 12 volt appliances on board so do carry some spares just in case one does blow you can replenish the fuse main hook up here so you hook the vehicle up you get your hooker bleed lift the collar on the hooker bleed lift the flap on the van slide that over hook the vehicle up first then the side so that you're never walking around with a live lead in your hand and when unhooking, there's a small blue clip in the left hand corner that you push down to release the pins in the hookup bead. Trimmer vent. So this is your hot water system, so your boiler. When heating the water on gas, this cover must come off. On electric, it can stay on. And when you're traveling and washing the vehicle, pop the cover back on. Pop your hand on the top, thumb in the middle and peel it off. Best place for that is in the passenger door pocket because if you leave it on, you'll get a red light and you need to take it off, blow into here and the excess gas buildup will be blown away and then you can try and reset it on gas. But only when gas, the cover needs to come off. Cold water, external shower feed. So you've got a pin that goes in there. On the other side of the tube, you do have a trigger gun, but make sure the pump's on for the cold water shower to work. And then coming to the cab door of the passenger side of the vehicle. Capless fuel filler for diesel fuel. And then underneath you've got your Add Blue. So as it's a new style diesel engine, it takes Add Blue to give it cleaner emissions. It's a 20 litre tank. It'll indicate on the dash when it needs it. Simply fill it up as soon as it comes on. And you can buy it on the pump, which is, or you can buy it in the drums and carry one in the garage. It's entirely up to yourselves. Leisure batteries underneath the cab seat passenger seat driver's seat is your engine battery and then to open the bonnet using the Ford key pop it in above the chasson badge turn it to your left hand side first to pop the bonnet and then to release it to the right and in here you've got your fluid so you've got your screen wash your brake fluid, your oil filler, and your power steering fluid. Dipstick for checking your levels just down here. 
Obviously weight plate on the front, three and a half ton gross vehicle weight, five and a half ton train weight if you were to put a tow bar on. Coolant, and then if you ever need to jump start the vehicle as the engine battery's underneath the driver's seat, you've got a positive terminal just here, and you've got a negative terminal just there for giving or receiving a jump start with jump leads. To operate the main 12 volt control panel, so you've got your master switch here, which turns the vehicle on and off. So if you're hooked up, when you turn it on, you'll get the green light here, which means you are receiving 230 mains electric. So if you plug anything into a mains plug, it will work. If you don't have that, then you're just on 12 volt. You've got your lights, so you can turn your lights on and off. Here, so make sure you've got your main light circuit turned on and then all of them are individually switched and you will need that on to operate the beds and drop down table as that's how it's wired on a chasson vehicle. You've got your pump. So this will pressurize the water to the taps, toilet and shower, making sure that you've got enough water on board first, which I'll show you how to do in a moment before you turn your pump on just so that you don't burn out the element on the pump. You've got your owner light, which is the light on the outside of the vehicle, followed by the buttons on the bottom, which correspond with the buttons on the side. So first one, you've got your leisure battery reading. So to get a true reading of the battery, take the hook about and then test the battery and you'll see what it's actually at. You've got the one of the truck, which is your Ford engine battery, And then you've got this one here, which is your fresh water. So you can see there, we've got half a tank of fresh water on board. When that yellow line goes to red, it means that it's in the red, it's time to refill. And when the one below goes to red, it means that the waste is open, which you'll need to open from behind the back driver's wheel to release the water that you have used. Here you have a dimmer, so you can dim and brighten the panel, should it be too bright or too dull for you to see all the people in the drop down bed at the front you can dim it down it takes the glare off the buttons and then you do have your Obasto diesel heater so it's very easy to use the Obasto diesel heater so make sure that you've got a quarter of a tank of diesel in the main tank or more and you simply just turn it on all the way to the top give it three to five minutes to start its combustion and then you can adjust the temperature. Obviously green light means that it's working. Should you get a flashing green light, you need to turn it off and you need to go and find your fuses for your diesel heater. On this model, it's in your Techni box locker, which is where your water filler, in, filler is and your other fuses are. Two separate fuses in the holder. You just lift the fuses out, give it 30 seconds, pop the fuses back in and it'll reset the diesel heater and you can turn the heater back on and if it goes to a solid green light it's working and it will warm the vehicle up and you can use the diesel heater when you're on the road so if you've got passengers in the back that are complaining it's cold pop the diesel heater on it'll warm the motorhome up for them or you might just want to warm it up 10 minutes before you arrive on the site when you're away in the winter but make sure you've got a quarter of a tank of diesel or more in the main tank for this to work in the kitchen area, you've got one electric hot plate on mains power, so you've got to be hooked up for this to work. And it is your left hand side dial, which indicates with the red light that it's on. And then two gas So once you've had the hob on, allow it to cool before you put your glass cooker hood down because you can shatter it if it's too warm and obviously just make sure that you haven't knocked this before you hook up because you might not be aware that this is on it'll shatter your glass so just do be careful with the electric hot plate when you are walking past the oven and then you do have your grill and your oven you may want to take these out while traveling because they can sometimes rattle or wrap them up. 
storage drawer underneath your oven. To the right hand side you've got a cupboard and then you do have a worktop extension so if you are prepping food or you're putting your mains power toaster or kettle on here you've got some spare space to prep some food and then you just simply pull here and you'll be able to fold it back down and it is just on a strong magnet so you're not going to break it if you pull it storage underneath the sink for pots and pans and food and then your cutlery drawer you've got your switch for your drop down electric bed here along with a mains 230 volt socket when hooked up that'll work making sure that the light circuit's on you'll be able to pull the bed down so you can stop it at any height and make the bed up underneath ladders clip on here see the ladders there or if you put the table down which I'll show you in a second how to put the table down and I'll bring the bed all the way down to its lowest point storage above in the kitchen cupboards just push the catches in to secure the doors before traveling and you've got some storage in here so you somewhere to hang your tea towel and some storage for your condiments or other bits and pieces so to operate your Dometic fridge freezer so you've got large freezer box fridge it's all controlled through the middle here, so you turn on and off by pressing and holding the button. Turn it off, turn it on. A stands for automatic energy selection. So what that will do is, the brain of the fridge will pick out the best source you have available and it will use electric where it can. So at the moment we've got a gas bottle on the back and we've got it hooked up. It knows not to waste gas, so it's went to mains power. If I was to take the hook about, it would switch over to gas. And if I was to start the vehicle, it would go to 12 volt. And it would keep the 12 volt setting. You need to pre-chill beforehand for it to work properly. Otherwise, there's no real use of it being on. As it's not going to get any colder on 12 volt. You've got to pre-chill it on either gas or electric first. And then... Put your shopping in the night before or if you've been to one site and you're ready to go to the next your shopping will be fresh when you start up on automatic it'll switch over to 12 volt and as long as you travel it should keep your shopping nice and fresh failing that you can change it manually so you can take the air off it's on the hookup mains 240 volt it'll act as a mains household fridge battery code 6 loss of 12 volt because it's not getting any because the vehicle's not started and then gas you would use if you were wild camping and you had no other way of cooling the fridge than using gas temperature here so five put on full blast when cooling down when you put your shopping in you might just want to turn it down as it sometimes does freeze the fridge and the freezer and then you've got your frame heater here so you can turn that on and that'll stop the door rubbers from getting stuck to the frame when operating on full temperature when you are finished with the fridge just clean it out give it a wipe out take everything out no matter if you're leaving it for a couple of weeks or a few months in the winter when you're not using it you've got to leave the doors open because you will start to get smells in the vehicle off the fridge if the air is trapped inside of it but what you can do is underneath both you've got these little toggles so you've got one there We'll get that one replaced. The need, it needs to go in there. Same with the other one. Once it gets, there'll be one put on there. I'll make sure you would pop it into there and it would keep the doors ajar and you can get air circulation in and out of the fridge and freezer to stop the smells. And then when you're traveling, you can pop the travel catch on on the bottom to stop the door from opening on itself if it ever did if you went over a bumpy road and the door decided to open it would stop it because the travel catch is on above the fridge is where your tv area lives so this is a status 
570 TV aerial with a Vision Plus booster. So starting off with the booster first. So this is your tele booster. So it indicates green, which means it's got a signal. Should it indicate orange or red, more so orange, you've got the amplifier. So you can then try and amplify the signal. So you can boost it and lower it. Should it be too strong and you're getting a pixelized picture, you can obviously try boosting it first. If it's on max, try turning it down to see if the picture becomes a still picture. If it was red, you would then have to adjust your aerial. So to adjust the aerial, loosen the nut off and push the aerial up. Use the toggle on the bottom to direct the aerial on the roof, but always look where your other motorhomes and caravans are pointing on your site. Point yours in a similar direction and then you shouldn't be on too long adjusting your TV aerial. But then before you do leave the site or travel, you need to loosen the nut off again, pull the stem of the aerial back in and tighten the nut so that the wind doesn't damage the TV aerial. Below on this one is a Vision, is an Avtex TV, sorry. So to work your Avtex TV that this customer has had fitted, there's a button in the bottom corner, so you need to turn it on, which will bring on the red light just behind here. It's called a master switch. Use a TV controller, point it to the red light, which is your infrared eye. You'll get a signal because we've tuned this telly where we are now. Every time you move, you've got to retune it. So get the remote, big orange button, AQT, press and hold. Press OK. And it's doing an auto search to find as many channels as it can in your area. If you want to fail to get a signal, you do have source and you can put a DVD in this side of the telly. If you want to fit a satellite, these tellies are satellite ready and you've got source and it'll be satellite and you can then it's got a built-in satellite receiver but always make sure that your tv is pushed in and it's clipped in pressing this button pulling it back to release the tv bracket across the back of the vehicle is your washroom so starting off with your shower so always make sure that your shower doors are tied back with the velcro straps before you travel. It'll just stop them banging around. And then you'll notice in the shower tree you've got a duck board. So this is just better for when you're using the shower for the water. It'll all drain off nicely off the duck board and bear in weight. It's better to stand on the duck board because it spreads the weight evenly than stand in the plastic shower tray. You can remove that for cleaning. We always recommend when you're finished with the vehicle and you're winterizing it, which is your winter procedure when not using it, you want to drain all the water out of the vehicle, out of the fresh tank, out of the waste, open all the taps throughout the vehicle, drain off your boiler. You don't want to forget about the shower head. So if you unscrew the shower head from the hose, lie the, tr the shower hose, as you can see, it's got a loop in there. Any water could freeze down in the tray with all the mixer taps in the open position. Any water in there or the pipelines behind will drain off directly out of the waste, which will be open from the outside, so it will drain directly out of the vehicle. You've got a hanging reel here for wet towels, but it also doubles up if you've been caught in the rain. Hang your coats in here on hangers. Shut the washroom door, which is on a velcro strap as well concertina door put the heating on in here will get very warm and it'll allow your coat to drip dry and dry with the diesel heater for ventilation you do have a skylight in here so you can open it once you've used the washroom but always making sure that it is shut before travel got a towel rail 
wardrobe along the back so hanging rail lots of storage on the three shelves these are your cushions for your front bed to make the bed at the front which I'll show you how to make up with the two infill cushions and then now getting onto the toilet so to operate the Fedford toilet what you've got to do is you've got to make sure the pumps on because it's a fresh water from the main tank supply for your flush press the blue button you've got the flush on the toilet with the blue button always flush the toilet first it helps lubricate the seal between the blade and the cassette and then to open the blade this grey lever so push it to the right so away from you and it's opened the flap there which is known as the blade everything can now go into the cassette that top of the blade's not going to get dirty you're going to use the toilet after you've used it you're going to flush it and then you want to bring this back to the left so towards you to shut the blade which will stop obviously anything coming back through the toilet but it also means if you're going to empty it which is when this little diagram here the little symbol of a cassette goes to red the, f the float is indicating that the toilet is full you can if it's done in this procedure and it's shut you can go out and lift the cassette out the side of the motorhome if it wasn't shut the cassette won't move but if you are getting a light on here and you've just emptied the toilet it's nothing to panic about it's just the float stuck so what you need to do is you need to take the cassette back out give it a shake and pop it back in because the the float is just stuck with a bit of toilet roll or something or sometimes it's just glitched out itself all you need to do is give the cassette a shake this is on all motorhomes and caravans it happens pop it back in and that light should go out bathroom lights underneath here so most common question where's the light it's on a small rocker switch underneath the sink and that lights up the three lights on the ceiling and your under counter lights toiletry cabinet or should I say drawer cabinets here to open your windows you just press the buttons in turn the catches push it out push it all the way out to bring it in and then you do have a fly screen push together you've got a blackout blind press in the middle and you can depart the two to operate your drop down table again you've got to have the main light circuit turned on on the control panel to operate this and the table and then on this key here is how you would drop the table so make sure the key's in and then you just want to don't hold the key hold the actual barrel and be very gentle drop the table down so you can either drop the table for a couple of reasons obviously the main reason is to make the bed but if you don't want the table up you can put it down in the coffee table position and then you can push the table to the front or pull it to the back pull the extension out and turn the top over and push it over so what you want to do is you want to put it into this position like it is now push it to the front like so and then what you want to do is you want to grab your infill cushion so I'll just grab the infill cushions now So you've got two infill cushions you've got one which is hard backed that one goes in first and it'll go towards the front of the cab so that will just go in here and then you've got 
the other one, which has got a leg on it. So you need to push to the right, fold the leg up, and then this one's got the leg because it hangs off the end of the table. And there you have a drop down, your lounge bed made up. You've got your drop down above, so press the button, you can stop it at any height if you were using it as a four berth, which it's manufactured to be, double bunk. Or you can bring the bed all the way down if it's just a two berth that you're using it for, to its lowest position, which is there. And that is just underneath waist height. No need for the ladder, you can pop that in the garage. You do have safety nets which are in the back wardrobe which clip onto here and clip onto underneath the frame. You'll see the eyelets. Just if you're putting children up there front and back, stop them rolling out during the night. But when you winterize in the vehicle as well, we always recommend that you drop the bed slightly down from the ceiling. It just allows air circulation around the mattress, stops any mould growing on the mattress with it being cold in the vehicle when not in use, parked up in storage or on the driveway. Not in use over the winter, so I would just leave it to about there. Allows air circulation onto the mattress. But remember, take your pillars off, leave your duvets on when you're using it. Just make sure it's not too thick and not too heavy for the motor because it may blow a fuse and you can pop the bed back up like so. Behind the passenger seat on the front of your lounge seat is the location of your hot water switches. So your boiler's behind there which I'll go through in a moment but this is your hot water switches. So this is how to get hot water. So by Truma Boiler EL 230 volt mains electric the top one so if you are on a site and you've paid your site fees you'll not want to use the gas which is the bottom one because obviously you don't want to waste your gas you've paid for their electric so you're going to use it so you've got two settings off in the center is in the center is off even the top one is one kilowatt, which is 750 watts of electric. The bottom one is two kilowatts, which is 1500 watts of electric. So depending on what amperage the site gives you, whether it's eight, 10 or 16 amp, will determine what electric source you use, either one or two kilowatts. And also it depends what else you're running at the time. So if you're on two kilowatts on 16 amp, just make sure that you haven't got anything else running at the same time, such as um, a 230 volt hairdryer or a um, mains kettle, because sometimes it can trip your vehicle or trip the site. But that's the electric side. The bottom one is gas and it's very easy. Obviously center is off and then you've got which temperature you want. So 50 degrees at the top or 70 degrees at the bottom. Making sure with the gas, the cover on the outside of the vehicle is taken off because it won't allow the fumes out of the vehicle and then you get a red light, which either means you've left the cover on, you haven't turned your gas on or you've run out of gas, which means it has faulted. If that happens when you've left the cover on, just knock it off. Go and remove the cover and blow into the vent, which will eliminate any buildup of gas. And then you'll be able to come back in and turn it back on. But you'd use gas if you're wild camping. You can use both together if you're in desperate need of water. And it should take about five to seven minutes to heat that 10 litre boiler of hot water up. Behind the boiler switches, is the location of your boiler. So this is your boiler here. It holds 10 litres of water at any one time, which is main fed from your fresh water tank, which is along here. In the winter, you want to make sure that everything that contains water is drained off. Because if not, 
the water could freeze if it gets really cold and goes to minus temperatures overnight and it isn't covered under any warranty. So what you want to do is, you want to drain off your fresh and your waste from outside, you want to come in with no power on, so don't put the control panel on and just open all the taps in the middle position of the mixer. This will allow any water that's any in any pipelines or sitting in any taps just to dribble out and obviously the waste's open from outside so it'll drain straight onto the ground beneath the vehicle and then you want to open the boiler. So to open the boiler you've got this little yellow valve here. It's lying down which means that the boiler is in use, it can hold the water. Stand that up but do it without the pump kicking in. So I've got the pump turned on now, turn the pump off, lift that up. So it's stood up on end and all that 10 litres will drain directly out beneath the vehicle. Leave it stood up during the time you've got the vehicle not in use. When you come to reuse it, obviously lie it back down like so. Put the bung on the end of the fresh water pipe underneath the vehicle so you can fill it. Shut the waste, fill the vehicle with a hose pipe. Come in, shut all your taps. Turn your control panel on. Put your pump on. Go to the cold side of the tap first. You'll get an automatic pressurised flow of cold water because it's drawn it from the main tank via the pump straight to the tap. Go to the hot side. It'll cough, splutter, make all sorts of noises because it's transferring the water. So it's transferring it from the fresh water tank via this pump here into here. It's pushing all the air out of the boiler until you get a free flow of water from the hot side of the tap. This is when you know that your system is then primed. But don't be alarmed if it's coughing and spluttering. It does take three, to three, four, five minutes just to push the air out and bring the water through. But make sure you've drained it down because if not it is a very costly mi mistake to make and isn't covered under your warranty. So to assemble the smart lounge, which is the two fold up seats. So I'm going to show you one side, it's exactly the same on the other side. So what you need to do is, you need to remove the cushions from the sofas. And then you'll see you've got a full size seat back there. Using the black knob at the back, pull it back, hold it back and lift the seat backrest up. You've got a seat belt buckle and a full seat belt here. And then what you want to do is you want to get the bigger base cushion, pop that on there and the, the backrest. And there you have a fully belted, full size travelling seat, which are on both sides. So when you're taking the cushions off, it's the cushions nearer to the door. So if you're looking at it, it's your right hand side cushions you want to keep hold of. And if you want to just store these ones away when you're travelling, if you're making to carry four passengers. Now in the cab, so to the right of the driver's seat between the seat and the door is your handbrake which is a foldable handbrake to allow the seat to spin. So pull it up, pull it a bit higher, push the button in and you'll see the light on the dash go out. That's indicating that the handbrake's off and then you can hear it ratchet back up to indicate that it's on and making sure that the light's on. That's just because the seat needs to spin. If the handbrake was to be up, the seat won't be able to clear the handbrake. On the passenger and driver's door, you've got Remus car blinds. So if you pinch them, slide them down, that will black out the passenger and driver's door on an evening. 
and then you've got the same on the windscreen so you just pinch pull the mirror forward slightly so that the back of the blind clears and then it is just magnetic so if it's going to be a windy night just pop something around the blinds just to stop them pinging open and then on the doors you've got lock and unlock because the habitation door is central locking on this model you can press this button on an evening it will lock the driver passenger and the motorhome door and it'll come up here to say that it's locked electric windows the so driver and passenger electric windows mirror adjustment so you can choose between the right hand side mirror driver side left hand side passenger side and it'll just the big mirror only the bottom mirror is manually so you've just got to pop your hand out and adjust that which is your blind spot mirror anyway rear and front fog lights and then your headlights so off side lights headlights headlight adjustment to adjust the angle of the headlights making sure that you always turn them off before when you're leaving the vehicle so it doesn't drain the battery wipers indicators volume goes between fm am phone auxiliary on on the m which is just mode skips your radio tracks your audio this one here will go through the screen so the screen at the moment is showing you a digital speedometer it's now showing you your average speed by just going up and down it's now showing you your average miles per gallon your instant miles per gallon because we're not running it's not working and then your traveling times to reset that you just press and hold ok and now it's showing you your range so that's how many miles you've got left in your fuel tank if you were to go back You've got trip computer one and trip computer two so you can reset them by pressing ok you've got information it says system checks zero message active but if you go down it'll tell you that your ad blue level is ok if your ad blue light comes on it'll come up on this screen it'll say ad blue low and it'll give you a mileage countdown so it'll say range of your ad blue tank normally it comes on at around a thousand miles so don't keep driving it on a thousand miles obviously you have got a thousand miles until it's completely empty but top it up as soon as you can so if so if you've got 60 miles to go that's fine but pull off the, wherever you need to pull into a service station or a petrol forecourt and normally they've got add blue on the pump it's about 150 a litre and the transit holds around 20 litres of that so just fill it as soon as you can because all that add blue system does is it cleans your catalytic converter out of soot at a certain temperature so that your engine is a clean emission engine if you are allowed to go to zero the engine won't start you'll have to get forward out to restart your engine once i've topped the add blue up or if it goes too low it'll go into limp mode which is a mode that protects the engine and it'll not go over 50 mile an hour so do top it up as soon as the light comes on or even better carry a drum of ad blue in your garage so that is the instrument cluster six speed manual gearbox lift the collar up into reverse but as you can see there you've got the same view regardless of if you're in reverse or in neutral from your rear view camera you've got your distribution your air con your temperature you recirculating the air within the motorhome and the fan speed so this is a climate control with a 12 volt point there lockable glove box with the main ignition key the forward key your hazards that padlock will come on when the doors are locked and then you've got your radio so it'll take a usb or if you press this button here 
you can lift this compartment up here which has got two cable grooves so if you want to put a dash cam or a sat nav on the windscreen you can keep all the messy cable in there and just have one neat bit of cable coming out on the windscreen so you've got a 12 volt in there and you've got a 3.5 milli auxiliary jack but to work your radio you can go up and down your radio stations here or on the steering wheel pressing 1 and 9 pressing and holding to save your favourite radio stations auxiliary obviously bluetooth audio USB or 3.5 milli jack so you just change aux line ins obviously that one in there <coughs> and then when it recognises the USB that will come on as well but to set your phone so you need to press phone OK, it'll say no phone, menu, add a phone, OK, find forward Bluetooth, press OK again, it'll say enter pin. So now you want to go onto your phone, so go into your settings on your Bluetooth and search and it should come up forward audio. It'll say pin, secure. So that pin there will then come up on your phone and you want to press pair. Once you've pressed pair, you want to... It'll say, do you want your contacts to be allowed to share to the head unit? Press allow. It'll download your phone book, download your contacts. So when someone does ring, you can just press enter and answer the call here or decline the call. And you can also use your phone for Bluetooth audio if you're using some um, softwares like Apple CarPlay, Spotify, or if you've got music on your phones because it doesn't take a CD. You either pop them onto your phone or pop them onto a USB. And then when you're struggling to get a FM radio station, you can turn on to your own personal music.